be around the positive influences, the people that are going to help you. Now, what I'm going to do is, because <clears throat> um, I wanted to spend a lot of time with my friend Corey here, because Corey's, uh, Corey's a great story for me. I mean, he's just, he's become a very good friend of mine, and uh, he lives actually up the street from me. We both live over by uh, Pataskala, uh, Ohio, and I've known Corey for probably going on seven or so years now, I would imagine, and I've seen him grow so much as a person. I might need a man hug here in a little bit, buddy. I've seen him, I'm so proud of him because of what he's done and I've got a video that, that I got two videos that I want to show you real quick because I want to introduce you to, the, to who he is and what he's developed before you fire that video up but he's taken a, 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 some of the stuff that I've said. I, was ho I hope that I was enough of an influence to him when we would come into the gym and we would talk because he saw my life changing and he saw that I was married and a family man and, I, and he, was, he was that too. He was, he's got two gorgeous kids and a nice wife and, you know, and just really treats them and he's got good character. And we would always bounce ideas off of each other. I would encourage him and he would encourage me and, and why we would come into the gym. And it was, it's a fun time when I go to the gym because I knew he thought outside the box. I would see Corey reading every, you know, he'd be on the, the pedal bike there, the stationary bike, and he'd be reading a business book. And it was, and he was, guess what he was doing? He was applying those small, diligent tasks to a regular, to everyday life. And here's, here's what's happened for him, okay? He, he had, and I'm going to go, I'm going to make him explain his story a little bit more, but it's very intriguing. Uh, he really has a rags to riches story. And he's now actually owner and president of one of the largest supplement companies in the, in the world that is now dominating uh, on the internet. Uh, it became brand of the year uh, on the largest supplement company website on the planet. Uh, their, he's been, their company and their logos are featured on ESPN and television and everything. So I want you to queue up a commercial for him and then I have another video I threw together on there as well. So, and then I'm going to bring Corey up and interview him. So go ahead, Derek. Help me welcome to the stage my good friend, Mr. Corey Gregory. Jump on up here. Man hug. All right, you can have a seat. Okay, I got, uh, you should be on. Did you turn it off? Let me just check real quick. Do I have to push the bottom here? Check one, two. Yeah, you're good. Thanks, cool. Mike. All right. So this is my friend Corey. Give him up and give him a round of applause again. What's up, guys? Um, Corey and I, we've been, uh, like I said, we've been friends for uh, quite a few years now. I used to come in and watch Corey. And if you look, if you go to his Facebook thing, profile, ladies, you're not allowed to go see that. But he has got the most amazing set of ripped abs I have ever seen. It's like you could stick quarters inside there when he's dieting. It's, 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 it's sick. That's why Mike wanted to do a bodybuilding show. He couldn't stand. He, he's like, I need to get some of that. I did, yeah, and he, and it worked. He, he actually put me on a diet plan. I placed third in that uh, that competition. It was really cool. All right, so I've got a couple questions written down because uh, it's it's a we we're like I was talking here about being diligent. Okay, that's really what business is about. It's about being diligent, about learning some stuff that you wouldn't have necessarily known before to take you to another level. And I watch it now, Corey. You got a big business background and everything, right? You were you were start out with a silver spoon in your mouth and everything. Tell us where you started, where you were from, how you kind were raised well uh, for you guys that are from Ohio I'm from uh, the Steubenville area uh, Steubenville Ohio area which is you know a little, couple hours from here um, I grew up as a fourth generation coal miner so you know the uh, the business in my family is money don't grow on trees that's what I heard you know so uh, basically what I did learn though was is is work ethic and that's what Mike's saying whether it's a show or whether it's your business or watch the phone off here the uh, the basics of it was just putting the time in. So I did what everybody else in the family did. I put in 90 hours a week underground, saved 20 grand in four months, and got out. <laughs> so it's, it's emotional when I talk about it because it, it was crazy, you know. So anyway, um, 
And Mike was a big, I met Mike uh, probably, let's see, after I was in Columbus about a year, two years, uh, I owned the gym that, that we train at, and Mike was one of my members, and he just saw me trying to figure out what I was trying to do. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things he told me was, you're going to get paid what your, what your knowledge base really is. And at that point, I knew a lot about training. I might add abs. I've been in magazines. I've done all that stuff. But the, the long term of me being a real businessman, I need to learn how to speak, which <clears throat> I'm trying to get through this right now. <laughs> you're doing good. <laughs> uh, which <clears throat> I've done in front of, uh, I think, my biggest group of 6,000 people. Uh, I've done um, a lot of cool stuff. And, and so one of the things that Mike really got across was, you know, just keep doing things every day to make yourself better. I don't have a, I don't, I barely made it through one year of community college. <laughs> <laughs> they kick you out? Mm. Almost. After I met my wife, uh, I didn't show up for like a month. <laughs> so <laughs> my teacher, there's like eight people in our class. He called and he said, are you still in school? <laughs> I, said, I said, if you'll let me back, I'll come back tomorrow. And he said, sure. So, and to date, I think I'm probably the most successful uh, Columbus State exercise specialist or whatnot certificate that I got. And, and really, the, the business, uh, I just kept applying that work ethic, that every day, grinding, grinding, and um, you're not really owed anything. And I think that's the thing with people, you're not entitled to anything, you gotta work for it. And I meet a lot of people that think I'm lucky or think this, and I earned every bit of it. And, and I think that's what, you gotta remember that, you, you can work, 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 and yeah, you're gonna get a little luck, you're gonna get a break here. And I'm still, even to this day, um, you know, probably about a month ago, I kept telling Mike, like, I'm trying to get this company public. I'm working, I'm working. I feel like, why is it not my time? Why, why is it not happening? And I started becoming the victor, not the victim. And I, I never really, I played those roles both at times, but you got to act like, you know, you got to be the victor. You got you to gotta just keep working, keep seeing, keep the vision. And, and last week it went public. So it was pretty exciting. So, yeah. It's a huge so, thing. Yeah, it's a huge thing. So starting out at the grassroots of just learning a work ethic from the family, um, applying it to a gym business. You know, I had 20 clients and opened up my first gym by age 20. Um, it was like 900 square feet. I borrowed $3,000 on 20% interest. Now you were, that was a huge money maker <laughs> coming huge up, money right? Maker, yeah. <laughs> um, everybody gave me my equipment, but I showed drive, determination. Everybody around me helped me, you know? So, um, and then over the years, it just progressed. I always, I started doing some multi-level marketing with Mike. I started learning more about business. I read everything from Gary Player books to, you know, Robert Kiyosaki and, and all the stuff that sounds kind of cliche in business. But even to this day, if I get a, hit a little rough spot, I go back to those things. Reading a chapter or 10 minutes a day, I follow that still. I did it this morning. I went and played golf after that, which was exciting for a Friday. But, you know, I, I do the same kind of concept. I get up a half hour early just so I can do those things. Um, you know, and the business continued to grow and grow, but it wasn't the, the, the real big prosperous business that I was looking for. I knew I had to do something bigger and I just kept it grinding, grinding. And then the other thing is, I think that when the opportunities come across, you gotta recognize them. A lot of people just don't see them. They're either scared, it's not their time. When I started Muscle Farm, which is my big business to date, I was building the new gym that we train in now like really building it, like pounding the nails and laying the tile. So I want to, I want you to emphasize on how much fun that was. Yeah. Make it, it yeah, on it, that point. I thought I was going to open it like three times. I got shut down by the building department. It was a pain, terribly. Uh, you know, we ran an ad, thought we were open in November and they said, oh, you don't even have a building permit, which I'd never checked in on. So then <laughs> we're like, oh, we thought we'd get one past you on that. It didn't work. So then I didn't have open until like July. So it was a year and a half. By the same time, I was having a baby, my firstborn who's five now, and I was starting, you know, to work with Muscle Farm, or my second baby, sorry. So the thing is, that all those going on, so was it the best time for me to start a new business that I thought was going to do what it did? Heck no. But I saw it, though. You know what I mean? I had to go after it. I'm going to interrupt you right there because that's a good point. Is typically whenever you're going to do something on an aggressive scale, and especially in business, there is no good time to do it. Like I said, ignorance on fire, that is like, there, there, I mean, there's wisdom in the fact that obviously I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying that a lot of people you'll see, well, I just, you know, the timing's just not right, da, 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 da. Make sure that it's not just that the timing's not right or you're just not stepping out, that you're being too cautious to the point that you're not willing to risk. 
because now business is, is obviously, yeah, there's some risk involved. And I want you to mention, you know, some of the things that you've seen happen with, you know, keep going on the same thing, but I, I wanted to make, because that's a great point on that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a, a lot of opportunities that have come my way that were definitely, you know, riskier. The risk and reward didn't balance out correctly. And, and th those are hard to sift through because you, you can't take everything that comes across your plate. Even today uh, and tomorrow I get stuff that these guys think it's a good opportunity and it doesn't make any sense for me. And then they get mad at me because I'm not interested because now I'm in the position of what I was looking for before. You know what I mean? But uh, when Muscle Farm came across my plate, I knew that my partner Brad had been in the industry. He used to play in the NFL for a few years. He understand performance. I understood powerlifting, bodybuilding, supplementation, that we just meshed. And he lives in Denver. We had never even met before. I mean, in person. On the phone, I talked to this guy five times, but our relationship with the other company was good. And when he called and said, this is what I got, I'm I, I thinking about uh, bringing you in. I was doing consulting with a multi-level marketing company. I was working with Mike, and they were paying me pretty good at the time. And I said, I can't even look at it if you don't pay me two or 3000 a month or whatever. And he said, uh, just keep looking, keep looking. And then finally I kept looking. I thought, this thing could really be like I could be the next Bill Phillips. I could, but do it differently because we all had our, also talked about the one like Wall Street thing with it. It's never been done in the industry before. So anyway, we started talking, started talking, and then I just said, you know what? I got one shot with pretty much everybody I know to invest in me and they see the work ethic and the, I think the character that I try to portray and that I live and uh, I went and generated nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars for my dream basically which is yeah by himself no one and I'm gonna I, okay now I'm gonna brag on Corey okay because here's the, here's what it comes down to okay this is the real important is people a, mo a lot of times I bet you it's more times than you would be willing to think about People don't necessarily a lot of times invest in the idea, they invest in the person, okay? That was 100%. That was, okay, that was 100%. I had one jug well, to show people. <laughs> right, okay, now here's the, here's the thing is it's, it's, and if you look at it, there's a lot of big businesses that really it came down to the character of the person. Now a character is not something that's just gonna show up overnight, so that you have to remember that. And if you've burnt some bridges, you may want to repair those now get it over with, apologize, do whatever you got to do because if you, if you don't have that character, then nobody's going uh, to, to, they're not going to jump into your bandwagon or, or be your cheerleader at all if you don't have the character to do it. Now, you also, what was, what was really good is back on the character is Corey had been, when all these years went, I mean, we're talking this gym that he had was not this big giant facility. It was a, it's a hole in the wall. We like, it's called old school. You know, we have tires we roll tires and we drag sleds that with chains and stuff on them like it's real old Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff back in the day but the cool part about that was while Corey was in there I'd see him in there sitting behind the counter and he'd be reading a leadership development book he'd be reading about successful people he would be doing those due diligent things because here's the thing is because he had taken that time in those times when no one was watching he wasn't on stage, but when it really mattered is when the times nobody's looking, he was building himself up for his character. So when his opportunity actually arrived and when the, the, uh, the meeting of, with Brad happened, he knew how to react, relate to people. He knew how to react to people because he had gone through some things. Like your first public speaking gig was at my house. Yeah, I was at one of Mike's home meetings in front of like 10 people. 10 people, and you were kind of nervous, but you ended up going through it? Yeah, I got through it, and then I went from that to like 2,500. The next, I got I got a consulting job off that one speaking. <laughs> how funny, <laughs> how funny is house. that? Yeah, so and you then, ended up uh, advancing. Yeah, advanced from there then to like, I think it was like 6,500 people. They were doing it in like six languages. I mean, it was insane. So, and I kind of followed suit with what Mike had been doing and, 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 and learned that stuff. And now those are things that, 100% help me today because when I got to go talk to big um, funds that want to come into the company or you know speak to any of these business guys like I'm usually Mike always told me just be yourself and I mean you know people will, can at least see that you're not trying to act like you're you're somebody else which is good and in when I was raising that money it was people investing in me I literally for the first 500,000 had one jug of what I sell which doesn't even look like it anymore yeah and, and it didn't even mix up really that well but the, uh, the concept, the fact that we had the relationships, and the fact that I just told everybody I've been waiting for the one big one, and here it is. I mean, guys, I always made like 100000 a year personal training. I wasn't starving, but it wasn't. I, I was still trading time for money, 
So I didn't have the availability to do stuff like this. You know, I had to be in the gym with my clients, which I love helping people, and that was a great job for me. And it was really hard when I told them I couldn't do it anymore. I had to give them away to somebody that would take care of them just as good as I did. But, you know, eventually I had to make the step as a businessman. I either had to be happy with where I was, which was still good. I still kind of at the top of that percentage of what 3% make 100000 or more a year. But, you know, I'm here to change generations of wealth in my family. The, the, that, that's the key for me. So that, that, and that's what I was really focused on. And, and although what I was doing was still changing it, but not like this is going to. So that, that's the thing is my why, or I guess they call it, it was for me to just stop it at this point. And now my son, his son, they'll understand entrepreneur business and all that stuff. So. And he said that about the why, write this down. This is a really good phrase. I've heard, I heard this uh, not too long ago and I, I, I train on this a lot. It's called your why should make you cry. Your why should make you cry. If you notice, he got a little choked up there at the beginning, Corey did, and it was because he's starting to see his dream come to fruition because of the due diligence back in the day. I mean, I, I, when I actually public speak in front of a lot of groups and I'm really sharing my heart, I break down all the time because it's, it's I look at the people that I've been able to help. I look, I look at the blessing that it's been to minister to people and, you know, and give and, and do things like that. Now, Corey, I want to, uh, and now a lot of people here, they're, they're either got some businesses going or they're new to business. What are some, uh, some tips you would kind of give them off the top of your head uh, that maybe I haven't said yet that maybe you have on your heart to share with them? Um, the big thing is, is uh, keep your rotation of books, like Mike said, the ones that really do it for you. It's going to be something different for everybody. For me, it's the, the uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad from Robert Kiyosaki. Um, I like the new Gary Player Don't Choke book, which I think is kind of funny. And his whole premise is just, I'm over this big putt that could make me three million and I'm just even blessed to be here, so why am I nervous? Because I couldn't even barely eat food when I was a kid because I was so poor, you know what I mean? So it's pretty cool. Um, the other, uh, there's a couple other ones that I kind of refer back to. Uh, the, le the last lecture, I think it is, by, by the guy that uh, passed away with cancer, that uh, his last lecture on Oprah and all this, uh, he talks about life. So <clears throat> there's some ones I keep in the rotation that just kind of keep me moving. And then uh, Mike's got a ton, of, a ton of good books that he had. Uh, the Slight Edge, I'm just now going to get ready and start. I haven't, I haven't got that one yet. But that, and the other thing is just that, like you said, day to day, I mean, I had a really bad day two days ago. And then, like, today is awesome so far. I was working on a million-dollar deal this morning. I mean, so, and two days ago, I was thinking, is, is anybody, you know, it just, you got to just tackle the day at a time. But you got to make sure that your daily activities are towards being successful. I mean, that, that's what it is, whether it's your daily activities are key. What, you know, my, my daily activity I started like two months ago, which is a workout thing, was I'm going to do push-ups and pull-ups every day. Not a lot, like 30, 50, something like that. No big deal, but I just did it every day. Same as uh, just getting up a half hour early so I could read a little bit more because I want to, you know, hang with my kids in the morning before I start getting on the phones or doing whatever. But those things that are daily activities are, are what makes the big thing. I mean, my gym <clears throat> has been open 10 years. My opportunity didn't come till year eight, and I was looking for it all the time. But when it came, I went after it big. And that's, that's, that's the thing, is when you know it really down deep, that this is the one you can drive hard. Um, and although I'm still learning the Wall Street gig, but you know, getting up and seeing your ticker symbol, which uh, is MSLP, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, you know, it's on the bulletin board. So, you know, we'll be on the bulletin board hopefully for a while, then maybe move up to the Amex or NASDAQ or whatever as we grow. But, you know, when, we, when you're able to see that and see that how much you're essentially worth at that point in time, man, my, my family thinks it's crazy. It's wild. And what's, what's really amazing, and let me kind of, I don't know if I actually introduced it properly as to what Corey has, is he has a supplement company called Muscle Farm, MP, that was the, the, the orange logo on there. And the, the fastest growing sport right now in the world is actually uh, mixed martial arts. It's, it's, they call it cage fighting, stuff like that. I do it myself, I think it's great. Uh, I told somebody from the bar business, I said, it's all the fun without the hate, you know, because two guys hug each other, they just pound on each other. And I explained it to people, I'm like, will you ever see little boys wrestle? Yeah, your little kids wrestle. So I'm like, yeah. And they go, well, the dumb thing is that half these adults should be doing this so they could get their frustrations out and get that energy out and go be productive in the world. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 we always do that. But what's really, what's so much fun for me is being obviously a humongous fan of the sport and obviously being into fitness and everything. 
and I'm coming to the gym, you know, we both got bedhead from sleeping and he's at the gym, he's been there, we got smelly shirts on and we're sitting there talking and, and he's getting phone calls from, from some of the biggest fighters in the world, guys that are all over ESPN, Chuck Liddell and, and Randy Couture and, and Sylvia and Rashad Evans, the, the guy that was on the video and all these guys got his stuff on here and I'm like, Corey, I can't wait someday when you and I are smiling, waving at people on Forbes magazine and ripped up t-shirts. Just because of knowing where, where he's been, where I've been, where a lot of people are. And, and the reason I wanted him up here is because I didn't want you to just think it was about me. It was other people that I associate myself with. Because the cool part is, is there's a lot of guys that come to our gym that I'm sure have talent, that I'm sure have something in them, but they hang out with the wrong people, they do the wrong things when, when they leave the gym, and it's, it's the association Corey and I have, we understand, each other, so, uh, uh, we, we understand each other on a different level based on the fact that we are both going in the right direction, which is, is success, okay? So Corey's been, uh, Corey's all over the world now. I mean, you had, your fighters had stuff on in Abu Dhabi down there when they had the fights. Yeah. Where, where, what else do you have on a bigger picture? That way people know how big this is. They can, because it'll be kind of cool for all these people to go, I saw Corey give one of his very <laughs> first interviews with Mike at yeah, this place. And you'll be able to, and I'm telling you, um, I think a lot of people are going to know what, you know, know what, who we are, what, the, what you guys are all about, because it's stuff that people relate to. Okay. It's stuff that's relevant in the world right now that you can bring up a topic with and say that you know the guy and met Corey and stuff like that. So go ahead and tell we us what we're at. Uh, the, the best thing that we did from a marketing standpoint is we attached ourselves to the UFC brand. Uh, UFC is the fastest, MMA is the fastest growing uh, sport, but the UFC brand is the sport, if you ask me. And yeah, they have fights in Abu Dhabi, Germany, UK, everywhere. We sell, we sell product in all those companies. We're completely international. Um, you know, I was just on vacation in Cabo with, with Dana White, the Fertitas, me and my wife spend the time with the fighters like Rashad. And we also do things with Sean Merriman of the Chargers, Joey Porter, the Cardinals. I mean, the stuff that we've got to do has been amazing. But, you know, I attach myself to one of the fastest growing things. Um, people realize I'm not just an MMA brand company. I'm an athlete's company. Um, we have like six or seven products. They're sold in GNC, Vitamin Shop. I have full distribution. Um, and that, that all took a little under two years and taking the company public to the bulletin board, so, which is pretty wild. So it took me eight years to make some money and find the opportunity, then two really hard years of basically like 16 or 18 hours a day to get it to this point. But, but coming back to the daily acti activities and what the 10,000 hour rule or whoever made that up, I can't remember, but you know, to be some sort of uh, expert in your profession doesn't have to come on an MBA from whatever university. I just spent time reading at the gym. Me and Mike might have talked only 10 minutes a day, but we did it a lot. We talked about right. this stuff a lot. I mean, often for years. Um, and then I just kept doing my own due diligence. And my, the thing is, if you want it, it's there. I mean, it's there to take. And, and I, I proved it. A, a thousand percent and, and now my passion once I get done with this will be to do more things like this I'm, I'm excited about me and Mike now stuff like did that. I ever tell you to start a supplement company can you remember that conversation say yes I, I think you said start one with you okay <laughs> That's all right. No, but no, it, what was cool is I you, you here's the thing you this on this point right here is most of you guys, most everybody in here, I would assume has a talent, something that they're skilled at, something they enjoy, something they love. And if you look at like uh, Peter in the Bible, right? When, when Jesus sent him off to do something, he didn't send him into some other field that he had no clue about. He sent him to go fish, right? Because he was a fisherman. A lot of times the stuff that you already have a passion for is where your biggest success is gonna come from because it's something that's stirring in you. It was, it was placed in you to do something significant. So Corey, I am so happy to have finally gotten you on stage here. This is the first time we've actually, since all this has been going, because he's been very busy. Every time I turn around, he's on the cell phone. He's got calls coming in. Um, anything you want to say, anything before I, uh, I continue and I get you off here then? And no, I'm just, I uh, was glad to be here. If you guys, any, any of you guys have questions, I brought some business cards and stuff, and you know, you guys shoot me emails, but it's good to be here, and thanks a lot, Mike. All right, I give it up for Corey Gregory. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Isn't that awesome, right? Say, if Corey can do it, I can do it. I always make sure that at any training I do, by the time everybody's done, they go, if Healy can do it, I know I can. That's uh, pretty much the thing.